about the town hall meetings in different parts of Canada, I thought, well, if nobody's going to do it, I better do it. I felt like I couldn't live with myself if I hadn't taken some action. So the fact that you're all here tonight, the artists that were performing, and the candidates, members of our arts community, arts administrators, give me great hope. Thank you very, very much for coming, and uh, welcome. So, we're faced with a couple of questions. What is the actual value of art, and how do we defend funding it? Local writer, musician, and philosopher Jan Zwicky made some astute comments when she accepted her Governor General's Award for Poetry in 2006. Let me quote her. Art is not merely a decorative enhancement of our lives, but a sign of our desire to live in the world fully and honestly. Anyway, our intention for this evening is to hold a nonpartisan dialogue with our future MPs, our candidates here who have graced us with their presence, we really appreciate that, and their views on arts and culture and their relationship to it. First is that the Harper government's recent cuts to art programming are totally unjustified. And I say that as someone who has worked at senior levels of the Federal Finance Ministry, including uh, some time as an assistant deputy minister, and I've had a lot to do with how federal budgets are made and financing decisions are taken. And there's simply no way that this action is a matter of budgeting, as Stephen Harper claims. You know, $45 million seems like a lot of money to you and to me, but in the larger context of the federal budget, uh, it's, it's not large at all. Nor is the timing of the cuts coincidental, coming just before an election. The Harper government is sending us a message. It raises alarm bells, and it should. The second thing I would like to say is that I know how important arts and culture is, and I think that I can help. I'm really impressed with the role that arts and culture play in this community, in Victoria, from individual artists to larger enterprises. It defines our community. And as a member of Canada's Foreign Service, I also saw when I was abroad how our arts and culture programming works in defining Canadian identity. And I helped to make those successful. I'm also someone who worked with the Conference Board of Canada. Uh, and I understand the value of arts and culture to our economy. I think some of you may be familiar with the recent study was put out by the conference board that estimated that the total economic footprint of the culture, uh, of culture in our society is approximately 7.4% of GDP. That's huge. It's also uh, more about, uh, not only about uh, GDP, but it's also about innovation and about creativity and we need to foster those in our society. Uh, bottom line is that an intelligent government is one that invests in arts and culture in building a healthy and sustainable arts and culture sector, not one that cuts. And so I will simply say that the Liberal Party, uh, as you may know, has recently, in the last couple of days, put out its platform on arts and culture, which involves substantial uh, investment in the sector. Uh, to the tune of 530 million, uh, doubling the budget of the Canada Council, reversal of the Conservative cuts. Before I started, we were very blessed to be able to be in a country, aren't we, where we actually can come together of different views and do it peacefully. Not many countries in the world have that. Now, Sandy, as ever organized as she is, gave us two questions to ask, but she left them nice and open. The first one was, what kind of policy would we advocate for if we were in government? And I think, ladies and gentlemen, there are really three basic principles that we ought to, that we would offer. The first one, resources. As my colleague Ann said, we have reversed the draconian cuts that the government made without any consultation to you. And we would add on to that $350 million a year to the arts in Canada. The second thing we would do is we would work in partnership with you. Things don't work if you do them alone. We have to work in partnership. The last thing is the principle of freedom. We would get out of your face. <laughs> and in cold, hard
hard cuts cash, they say, cold hard cash. We know that you, the arts, produce up to $85 billion to our economy. I will go to the second question. <laughs> what would we measure? The first thing, the state get out of the creative process of artists. Two, access to arts, music, and drama in schools, much forgotten and much, much missing in our schools. How can children be all that they can if they're not being able to exercise that part of their brain that enables them to access arts and music? This is fundamentally important for their development as human beings. The number of movies made, the number of films made, the number of poets we create, the number of spots available for training, the number of jobs that are available, all of these things are the things that we would measure. My, my wonderful colleagues, uh, Keith Martin and Anne Park Shannon, have told you what the Liberal platform is. And I think, I think I'm the only candidate that predominantly makes my living as an artist. So I'm going to just do something. It's, this is shameless self-promotion. <laughs> so, this book just hit the press. And I, the reason I'm talking about it is that I spent a year doing this book, and I made absolutely nothing, except I did have a Canada Council grant. Thank God. <laughs> but, important thing. When the book starts to sell, when and if and I hope, then I will be getting an income. And one of the main things that Dion has, uh, has announced in his cultural, culture and arts uh, platform is that there will be income equalization. And what that means for you and I and authors and people that are spending a lot of time working on arts projects is that when we're going through our poor periods, uh, when we get into our periods and we're actually making some money, we're not going to be taxed the hell out of. So that's just one of the great innovative. So yeah, big hand. <laughs> so okay, so let's talk about what is that? What is it? What, what's the criteria we're going to use to to illustrate that we've got a very healthy arts community? Well, as many of you might know, I come from Salt Spring Island, and if any of you have spent any time in that community, what a healthy community looks like is one that is full of artists. Those artists are out there, whether it's raising money for daycare, whether it's supporting, saving a watershed, whether we're out there advocating for our, for our new first gay pride parade. The artists are there. The artists are engaging us in the debate. We're there communicating the important ideas of the time. And I really want to stress that this is, to me, this is a measure of how well our arts are doing, is that the new ideas that are, are, are coming into society are well communicated. And that's because our arts and our environmentalists and our policy makers and, our, and our, our lawyers and our business people are all communicating. We're all sharing a common vision and that we're using our artists as mechanisms, as vehicles for communicating great ideas. I mean, that's one of the things that I have such a love of doing, is, is talking to scientists who couldn't, you know, they couldn't sell piss up in a brewery. But I can take their ideas and communicate them, which is what I did in this book. I went to the top climate change scientists and I said, tell me how I convinced Stephen Harper to understand climate change, which would be the equivalent of convincing an eight-year-old, and he told me. And so that is going to be the sign that we have won. One uh, sent in a notification that he would mm -hmm. like me to read, um, and so I will do so on his behalf. Uh, it's from Jack McClintock, who is the conservative uh, <laughs> member riding, or the conservative um, candidate in Victoria. And it says, good evening. Thank you for extending me this invitation to address your meeting this evening. I regret that I cannot be present to hear these discussions on the importance of artistic and cultural activities to the citizens of Greater Victoria.